What is going on guys, this is Daniel, and you may be asking why am I doing an Atlanta Hawks offensive breakdown, but after you listen to this clip, I think it's self-explanatory. One thing the Hawks do very well is pass the basketball. Mike Blutenholzer, their first year head coach, a longtime Spurs assistant, and this is sort of like a JV team for San Antonio. They model their offense like the Spurs with passing, cutting, and lots of ball movement. Yeah, what a coincidence. San Antonio leads the league in assists. And Atlanta second, right behind them. So yes, I wanted to see how closely this offense resembles the Spurs offense and how well they execute it. This play is right out of the Spurs playbook called Strong, where Teague the ball handler will pick a side and then reverse the ball to the trailer and he'll swing it again. That triggers a double staggered screen with the man in the corner, in this case Corver looking for a shot. If they get nothing off of that, that usually triggers a pick and roll, but instead things get very stagnant. Teague should execute a dribble handoff here, but instead he sets an awkward screen for Millsap and it ends in a turnover. Here's Strong, and again they don't get anything off the double staggered screen, but they get it to Carroll and they execute a nice pick and roll, but this may be the worst pass I've ever seen. This time on Strong, better screens are set, and Bosch, who's guarding the last screener, must help out, which leaves everything else open, and they get a layup. Now here they try to run strong, but notice how Corver is in the opposite side for this so they can't do a double staggered screen for him, instead they set a few single pin downs which doesn't really work that well and they turn it over. What I would have liked to seen them do is since Corver was on the opposite side, the Spurs often run this, Corver would set a cross screen in the paint for Millsap, the red circle, and then receive a down screen of his own from the blue circle brand. A bit confused, we'll watch Leonard, who'd be Corver on this play. He sets a cross screen and receives a pin down and gets a wide open jumper. Here they are set up to run strong, but instead Millsap ditches the play and drives and turns it over. And this is really an ugly possession out of strong, as after nothing's open off the initial action, they go into street ball mode. And could you ever imagine the Spurs with this awful spacing right here? I don't think I could. Can you? And there's no surprise to end up with a terrible shot. Now I want you to watch Lou Williams in this play, bottom left of your screen. He's supposed to be running off uh, the double staggered, but instead, notice how he stays in the same spot the whole possession. I'm talking 18 plus seconds where he's literally just standing there and that just cannot happen. Now here they run a single double for Corver where he'll have the option to run off the double screens or the single screen. Here he runs off the single screen, but in my opinion this play is very simple and rudimentary and can be easily contained. Here it is and after that the offense slows down and Carroll is forced into a tough shot. Here again they run the single double and a better screen is set which forces help and they get a wide open 3 for Carroll. Now let's take a look at the Hawks pick and rolls. They'll do what they call 25 straight out of the Spurs playbook where Corver will set a screen for the pick and roll screener and when the Heat hedge that leaves Brand open for the shot. The Hawks did a good job for the most part exploiting the Heat hedging and here they hit the roller who swings the ball and they get a wide open 3 for Teague. A great way to exploit hedging is to hit the high low man off the roll but good help defense by the Heat so Corver finds the man they're helping off of Scott in the corner but he just can't hit the shot. Here again they run the pick and roll and they run it nicely but Mike Scott drops the ball, literally. I admit I haven't watched the Hawks much this season but in the little time I have I can already tell they move the ball well and are unselfish and here they get an open shot. I do not like the way the Heat defend the pick and roll as they double team the ball handler which puts Bosch on an island guarding both the roller and his man and here they hit the roller who gets a wide open shot but he misses. But on this pick and roll the spacing is poor and a bad pass is thrown and they turn it over. Here Millsap will slip the pick and roll with not really setting a screen and the Heat don't bite and Teague takes an ill advised shot. On this one, the Heat will send three men and completely double triple team Teague and three men converge which means someone is wide open, that someone is Williams who makes him pay. And on this pick and roll, the Heat nor ice or hedge and Lou Williams can waltz right into the lane for the easy floater. And this is very nice right here, the screener will roll to the basket and what the Spurs often do is bring the opposite big up to the top and this leaves Brand open but he misses the layup. 
like the Spurs, the Hawks run the double pick and roll, and one player needs to roll and one needs to pop, but that doesn't happen, so everything gets stagnant. And you'll notice comically, Corver will try to set a pin down for Elton Brand of all people. That doesn't work, and Millsap takes a tough shot. This time both players pop which is fine because the spacing is so good and they find Scott for an open jump shot, he just can't hit it. And this is a page out of the UCLA 1-4 offense as Shelvin Mackle UCLA cut to the basket which flows right into a pick and roll and they get a good shot out of it. And look, the Hawks run the famous loop play where Mack will receive three screens around the world. Personally, I think he's a little slow for this play, so they don't get anything off the initial action, but it still flows nicely, but they can't convert. They also run a few post-ups for one of their best players, Millsap, and here he isolates and hits a nice shot. And here again, they isolate Millsap, and the spacing is good, pretty solid movement, and they're able to find Scott in the corner for a good look. And this is what I've been annoyingly clamoring for. Corver sets a cross screen for Millsap and then will receive a screen of his own. The first look is to Millsap, of course, and here they get him for a foul. Really nice stuff. And just for your enjoyment, here's the most comical sequence of the game. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I really like the stuff the offense is doing simply because it is what the Spurs do. So I think the Hawks have a bright future. They don't have a lot of talent right now, but I think Coach B, I can't pronounce his name, is the right guy to coach this team, and they could be playoff contenders in the future. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and have a good one.